Finding the chi-square critical values is the first step in constructing the interval estimate of the population variance sigma square. Since the confidence level is 0.95, the area of each tail of the confidence interval, the red areas, are equal to alpha divided by 2, which is 0.025. This value, alpha divided by 2, is used to determine the critical values. Since alpha divided by 2 is 0.025, the subscript alpha divided by 2 is replaced with 0.025 in the upper critical value. Since 1 minus alpha divided by 2 is 0.975, the subscript 1 minus alpha divided by 2 is replaced with 0.975 in the lower critical value. The degrees of freedom are equal to 9 since there were 10 thermostats in the sample. The degrees of freedom also happens to be the mean of the distribution. Substitute 9 for n minus 1 in the confidence interval estimate. The critical values are found in columns 0.025 and 0.975 and row 9 of the chi-square distribution table. The chi-square critical values are found in the chi-square distribution table in columns 0.025 and 0.975 and row corresponding degrees of freedom equal to 9. The lower critical value is 2.7 while the upper critical value is 19.023. Substitute critical values 2.7 and 19.023 into the interval estimate. All that remains is to compute the sample standard deviation. To compute the sample standard deviation, we need to first compute the sample mean, which is the sum of the values of x divided by the sample size. The sum of the values of x is 681 degrees Fahrenheit. Dividing this by 10 yields a sample mean of 68.1 degrees Fahrenheit. The first deviation from the sample mean is a negative 0.7 degrees. The first squared deviation from the sample mean is 0.49 degrees squared. The second deviation from the sample mean is negative 0.3 degrees. The second square deviation from the sample mean is 0.09 degrees squared. The third deviation from the sample mean is 0.1 degrees. The third square deviation from the sample mean is 0.01 degrees squared. The remaining deviations from the mean range from negative 1.1 to 1.4 degrees. The remaining square deviations from the mean range from 0 to 1.96 degrees squared. The sum of squared deviations is 6.3 degrees squared. Dividing this by 10 minus 1, the degrees of freedom, yields a sample variance equal to 0.7 degrees squared. Substituting 0.7 degrees squared for sample variance S squared yields 9 times 0.7 in both numerators. Simplifying yields the 95% confidence interval, whose lowest value is 0.33 degrees squared to 2.33 degrees squared. We are 95% confident that the true population variance is in this interval. That is, if we replicate this experiment 1,000 times to build 1,000 confidence intervals, 95 of the confidence intervals will contain the population variance, sigma square. The null hypothesis is always associated with the word equal, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or just plain equal to. The alternative hypothesis determines whether the test is lower-tailed 
upper tail or two tailed. Sigma zero squared is the hypothesized value for the population variance. This test statistic is called chi-square stat, which is equal to the degrees of freedom n minus one times the ratio of the sample variance and the hypothesized value for the population variance. Recall that Byers Digest is rating thermal right thermostats. Byers Digest gives an acceptable rating to a thermostat with a temperature variance of 0.5 or less. Connect a hypothesis test at the 10% level of significance. Determine whether the thermal right thermostat's temperature variance is acceptable. Since a thermostat is acceptable if the variance is 0.5 or less, then all hypothesis is the variance is less than or equal to 0.5. The alternative hypothesis then would be the variance is greater than 0.5. This indicates that this test is upper tailed. Recall that the sample variance was equal to 0.7 and the degrees of freedom were 9. With the hypothesized value equal to 0.5, the industrial standard in this problem, the chi-square stat is found by substituting 9 for the degrees of freedom, 0.7 in for the sample variance, and 0.5 in for the hypothesized population variance, the industrial standard of 0.5. Hence, the chi-square stat is equal to 12.6. The critical value for this upper tail test is found in the chi-square distribution table. Since the significance level is 10%, the critical value is found in column 0 .10 <coughs> and in row corresponding to degrees of freedom equal to 9. Hence, the chi-square critical value is 14.684. Here, the alternative hypothesis is, the alternative hypothesis, not the null, is the population variance is greater than 0.5. This means that this is an upper tail test. The expected value of chi-square is equal to degrees of freedom. In this problem, the sample size is equal to 10, and since 10 minus 1 is 9, the expected value is 9. The critical value from the chi-square distribution table was 14.684. The probability of being greater than it is 0 0.10, the significance level shaded red. The critical value defines the do not reject the null and reject the null regions. Since the chi-square stat is in the do not reject the null region, the null hypothesis is not rejected at the 10% significance level. That is, there is insufficient evidence to conclude that the temperature variance for thermal right thermostats is unacceptable. So far we have looked at tests involving one population variance. Now we look at tests involving two population variances. The null hypothesis is always associated with the word equal, less than or equal to, or just plain equal to. The alternative hypothesis, hypothesis determines whether the test is upper tail or two tail. The variance of population 1, sigma 1 squared, is estimated by variance of sample 1, S1 squared. Sample 1 is of size N1 and from population 1, which is normally distributed. The variance of population 2, sigma 2 squared, is estimated by the variance of sample 2, S2 squared. Sample 2 is of size N2, and from population 2, which is normally distributed. The population with the largest sample variance is called population 1. Hence, by definition, sample 1's variance is larger than sample 2's variance. This is why we only need two 
sets of hypotheses. In this section, we essentially want to know if the population variances are equal, which is mathematically equivalent to the ratio of the variances equals 1. The sampling distribution of this ratio has the F distribution, whose mean is, is approximately equal to 1. Since both population variances are unknown, we use the corresponding sample variances as estimators. The ratio of the sample variances is called the test statistic, which we refer to as F stat. If the null hypothesis of the two-tailed test is true, we expect the F stat to be approximately equal to 1. If the null hypothesis of the one-tailed test is true, we expect the F stat to be greater than 1. The F stat will always be greater than 1 or equal to 1 because the larger sample variance is always in the numerator.